Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Thanks for joining us on today's podcast of Conversation and Coffee with your co-host Gary Senna and I am Danny Vicente. Thank you for listening whenever, wherever, and however you are joining us. Conversations and Coffee is the place where we share a cup of coffee and allow our curiosity to sit in the driver's seat and explore topics in your industry. Everything from technology to leadership to innovation and so much more. So grab your favorite cup of coffee, sit back, laugh with us while we dive into the topics keeping you up at night. Welcome to another podcast of Conversations and Coffee with Gary Senna and Danny Vicente. Danny, who do we have on, on tap today? Hey, good morning, Gary. Today we are joined by our esteemed colleagues from App Dynamics, and I will let them introduce themselves. You know, Gary, before they jump in and introduce themselves, there is this piece called the Central Nervous System for App Dynamics. And uh, if you are concerned at all at your age, figuring out whether that is a technology or some part of your physical being, it's not. It's technology, and we'll jump into that soon. But, guys, uh, if you would mind introducing yourselves, and we can get started. James, why don't awesome. you go My first? Name- Shereen, you go first. <laughs> Ladies first, I suppose. My name's Shereen Aminabadi. I'm excited to be here. I work for App Dynamics. been here about two years, specifically on the business IQ go-to-market and commercialization team. And I have a feeling we'll be talking about business IQ quite a bit this afternoon. Um, it's the, it's, excuse me, the analytics portion of what we do here at App Dynamics. Hey, good to be with you guys. James Kistler. I'm uh, also with the Business IQ go-to-market team, kind of focusing in on what we do from a business analytics perspective. I've been with APT about three and a half years now and have uh, known Danny for most of those years. It's, it's probably sorry. been a bit of, bit sorry, of a torture, James. you knowing me quite that long, James, but it's it's been an absolute blast to get to know you, my friend. Um, you know, one thing as we jump into it, I'd like to ask you both is, you know, you mentioned BizIQ, um, you mentioned just APT in general. For those folks out there that are just questioning right now what we're talking about, can you guys give a, a brief intro on what is APT and what is BizIQ? Yeah, Shereen, you want me to take that one? I can take that. Sure. If I had to summarize what App Dynamics does, I would say th- it really falls into three pillars. Um, complex distributed tracing is the first. The second is profiling code in production at low overhead. And the third is drawing out those business insights um, that we call business IQ here at AppD. And it's really tying business metrics to performance metrics to really see application performance and business performance side by side to really understand if there's an application degradation of some sort, how it's impacting the end user experience. And I, I'd imagine with the you know the applications becoming such a integral piece of every network out there, that visibility and, and that metric that you're talking about must be vital to every business that you guys you guys work with. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd I'd go even farther or simplify it even more and just think of you know app dynamics for those of you that maybe aren't as familiar with what we do. It's really just monitoring those applications. So instead of looking at things from a hardware perspective, it's really looking at all of the calls that application is making for whatever that application does, whether it's something for like online ordering or any other kind of application. Think of a mobile application that you use or some kind of web browser, any of those customer facing or behind the scenes applications, we're able to monitor those and identify when issues are happening. Very cool. Now, when we say application, are we talking end customer application or are we talking back office application? What type of applications are we are we referring to? Both. (laughs) Any. Usually where you see people making the investment, it is on that customer facing application side. So if you have a customer facing revenue generation generating application that's really critical to the business obviously that's where it's going to be most important to be able to have that kind of deep visibility that app dynamics provides 
but the sol solution works the same whether it's on a customer facing application or something from the back end. James, could you could you give us? Oh, I'm sorry, Danny. Go ahead. No, go ahead, buddy. Jump in. No, James, could you give us like a working example so we have like a foundation to springboard the conversation from? Yeah, yeah. Think of just any kind of like the simplest one is probably any kind of e-commerce application. So, you know, Amazon, any site like that where you're either on the website or on a mobile app and you're you're buying something. There's certain actions that you're doing. So you're going through and, you know, you're maybe searching for items and you're adding items to cart and you're checking out. Yeah, all of those transactions are going across multiple, you know, they're going across a network, but then they're also hitting different pieces of infrastructure. So we kind of build a map that shows all of those connections and when things go wrong, show you exactly where they're going wrong. And it looks at it again from an application perspective. So we're looking at all the way down to the line of code that was running when that problem happened. So the idea is to be able to identify issues and triage issues quickly. Perfect. Thank you. When, when we're talking about problems within the application, uh, what type of problems are we referencing? Is it, is it uh, at the application itself? Are we talking security? What, what are we looking at when we're, when we're talking about that? Yeah, it can really be anything. So think about a microservice or a JVM. Um, maybe it's one is at capacity. Maybe it's below. Wait, wait, wait. It's time out, slow. time out, time out, Shreve. What is a JVM? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a JVM is a Java virtual machine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So think about everything that takes place on the back end to run an application. You have database calls, you have third-party outgoing calls, calls to different APIs. All of these have to stay interconnected and working efficiently to make that application run. So if at any point anything goes wrong with any one of those components, it can make the application stop working. That could be, so think about any application. James talked about retail. That could impact your checkout process, for example. So you have customers, you know, viewing items, adding them to cart. When they go to checkout, something on the back end isn't working. Maybe they are logged into their account and the application is making a call to the database to pull their credit card information that's stored. And for whatever reason, that query is taking too long and it's not pulling, so it's timing out and not letting that customer check out. So that's just one example of what could be going wrong on the back end that impacts the end user. You know, it's interesting. As, as you guys are talking, I can't help but feel like this is one of the few technologies that truly speaks to outcomes. You know, one of the ones that you don't have to be uh, deep in the weeds in IT to understand, but it, it is a direct reflection of the outcomes these businesses are chasing. Is that what you're feeling and your customers are indicating as well? Yeah, and, th and that's exactly kind of the, the correlation we talk about when we start bringing in the business analytics piece. So the, the foundation of what we do with AppDynamics is very technical, and we're looking at kind of the bits and the bytes and all of the code running through but because we have that level of visibility, we can also kind of look at the, the payload of those transactions. So we can see in that retail example, hey, somebody was trying to check out and they had a shopping cart with nine items for a total of $240. So we can see like here is the, the revenue at risk or here's the business outcome that's in jeopardy because you're having a, a technology issue. It's being able to see both sides of that. Wow. So the numbers of that, I mean, James, that example you just used is, is it, it's, it's pretty significant because you're able to actually give them, hey, this problem is costing you X amount of dollars because your customers are getting stuck. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so we're, we're playing to a couple of different audiences. So our, our traditional audience, you think of kind of developer community, IT operations, but when we start layering in business analytics, now it's, it's anybody that maybe has responsibility over a certain portfolio or product from a business side. So it's really kind of bringing those teams together to kind of provide the framework to have a conversation of understanding how the application is impacting business results. Yeah, and if you look at that same retail example, it's important to the business owners to not only understand how much revenue is at risk if customers aren't able to make their purchases, 
but also pull even other information out of that, like who exactly those customers are. Are they a certain uh, status level with your organization? Are they platinum? Are they silver? And understand exactly what they're trying to purchase, how much is at stake that's in their cart. We're able to piece that all together and say, um, from an individual user perspective, who's having challenges and who they are and what that looks like, or at an aggregate level. Well, and Shereen, how quickly does this happen? Yeah. I mean, is it like like are reports generated like instantaneously or what's the speed of this? I mean, it's as near real time as possible. So that's the value that we're providing. Yeah, we give you the performance metrics of your application in real time. And then we want to be able to tell you exactly which end users are being impacted. So we pull that information and a lot of our retail customers now are using that information to do win back campaigns with their customers. So, hey, I understand you are experiencing an application performance issue. You weren't able to make your purchase. We're working on the error. Um, here's a coupon code for the next time that you're, you know, wanting to buy that purchase, whatever it might be. Oh, my goodness. That new golf club. <laughs> That's the coolest thing in the world. It, it, it really is, you know, and, and uh, I like to ask this question of all of our, our guests on the show, and, and it sounds amazing, and I want to make sure it's not only amazing in its performance, but on its ease of use. It, it, is this a complica complex thing to, to get on to folks' systems, or, or is it pretty simple? Yeah, there's kind of two answers to that um, from my perspective. There's, you know, the overall monitoring. So we have to be monitoring that application to obviously get that kind of visibility. So there's the deployment of agents that, that goes out there and kind of discovers all of those business transactions that are happening. And that's automated. So most of what you'll see there, all of that configuration will kind of discover and see. The business metrics are a little bit different because we need to know what specific metrics you want to go after. Um, we're very prescriptive about what we want to get because we don't want to, you know, collect everything and have too much information. So by default, we're only looking at the performance metrics. And then we work with the customer to say, okay, what are the key business metrics that you want to track? And then we work with them to identify where they are and pull those out and kind of visualize them in a different dashboards and reports. Uh, but everything we do from a business analytics perspective is all kind of based on widgets. So it's really kind of easy drag and drop. Um, we do have our own query language. If, if customers are uh, comfortable with that, they can write their own queries to get the data they want. But we make it really easy to pull that into dashboards. Very cool. So it sounds like you really truly partner with the customer to figure out what outcomes they're chasing, what they're trying to accomplish, and then, and then build kind of the, the, the metrics to that outcome or, or use case. Yeah, in, in fact, that's where we try to start is what is the particular application? What are the key metrics around that application that are going to be important to the business and let that drive the technical configuration? Make sure that the business transactions that we discover and configure are all aligning to that business outcome. So it is truly that kind of unified tool that they can look at from a business perspective and from a technical and IT operations perspective. Great. So I, I'll ask this question to either one of you. When we talk about scope of businesses, I mean, how, how big is your platform? How big is App Dynamics? Um, I, I think the question you're asking is probably more around, you know, how big are the environments that we cover or is there a limitation? And it's really uh, the, the customers that are the best fitted to app dynamics are the ones that have really big homegrown applications that are kind of legacy and been written and rewritten and added on to over the years. Those are the ones that we see customers getting the most value because they've, they've never had the kind of visibility that we can provide. So they, you know, they can now all of a sudden see this topology of what their entire application looks like and all these connections that are made. And it's really interesting when you when you go in for the first time and a customer is like just instrumented app dynamics and they're looking at that flow map that we build and they're saying, oh, well, well that's not right because we see this connection from prod to test or other things that we have rules in place that that could never happen. And then you see people like scurry away and make some changes and the next day, next day it looks different. So um, 
yeah, the, the bigger the environment, the kind of the better in terms of the value that they're going to get from the complexity that they may have. <laughs> Always. <laughs> James, as you described that, is, is that all um, kind of one platform where they can go and see all those metrics? I, I know our customers never want to have to jump from one to another to another to another to get all that. Is that all condensed into one spot? Yep, absolutely. So that's one of the things that App Dynamics has always been um, good about is making sure it's all one single platform. So everything we talk about is all you know in one single user interface. So obviously, there's different you know tabs you may jump to, but it's all in a single tool. You're not jumping around and trying to correlate things back and forth. That's all built into the the interface, and all of that data and the different components are all in a single place. Very cool. And. When, when we're looking at the application performance, there's always that, that next level, right? And it's the customers and what are they doing and how are they interacting? Does App Dynamics have visibility into that end user or is it only when the end user starts touching the application? Trina, I feel like I've been talking a lot. I'll let you go. <laughs> So we're we're going to let me let me make sure I understand your question correctly. You're you're wanting to understand whether or not we pick up on user behavior prior to there being any sort of application degradation. Absolutely. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So that's a great question. Um, you know, we're looking at the application, what's running on the back end consistently, and we do this by and I don't think we mentioned this so. James mentioned that we're an agent-based technology, but the way we monitor and track the entire application, what's uh, happening on the back end, is we inject a GUID into um, the line of code, and then we tag and trace that as it hits all the different components of the application. So as you know, it hits one API, goes to another, maybe makes a database call, maybe a third-party call to like a payment processing company um, that that customer of ours is using, we track all of this. And then what we do is we automatically uh, baseline. So we measure, monitor, and score every one of these business transactions. And then we baseline them so that our customers understand what healthy and normal performance of their applications look like. So when anything degrades, they get an alert in real time prior to prior to anything really going wrong before it's impacting the end user. So I, I guess that's my long-winded way of answering your question and saying, we're looking at the behavior of the application and users throughout like the entirety of a customer working and using app dynamics. But what happens is we start taking these code level snapshots when something goes wrong so that we can see what exactly it is in the application, who's being impacted. But yes, we do know to some certain extent who the users are and what they're doing in the application, even when performance is normal. Love it. That's a great, great answer. That's, that's, to me, that's absolutely incredible and stunning. Now, given, given the fact, and that this could be, both of you could answer this or one or the other, Given the current climate, which is probably the strangest time ever to be alive in our in the world between the pandemic and all the racial stuff, have you guys seen any impact on business or a heightened need or I mean speak to the current culture yeah I think James and I can both take a piece of this. James works a lot closer with our customers. I'm more on the back end of things on our team. Um, but yeah, we've seen customers really being impacted by the pandemic. And it's not just your typical retail companies. Think about every company. In order to stay relevant and competitive, companies have really had to ramp up their digital strategies. And we've seen a lot of companies that you know, had it taken to their digital strategy and had put plans on hold, really have to implement new strategy within a couple of weeks to really create online ordering or supply chain processes. You know, there's a lot of restaurants now, if you think about it, that have to provide online ordering capabilities. Otherwise, they might just struggle or go out of business. Um, 
So we've seen a lot of our specifically retail customers, uh, restaurateurs, banking, anyone that has an online ordering process and supply chain process, so think shipments, um, even in manufacturing, it, we've seen an increase in application behavior and traffic to where these companies have really had to scale to support that traffic. Well, just a great answer. James, you want to comment on it? Yeah, it's, it's sort of interesting because it, it, it really follows the kind of narrative we've been talking about within APTI. And, and for a few years, you know, we've been saying, you know, your application is the face of your business now. And, and that's become, it has been becoming more true that more companies are relying more on digital solutions and moving things all to, you know, digital based applications. And, and you see that now with COVID going on, the companies that were already doing a really good job of managing those transactions digitally. So they had, you know, a way to order on a mobile application or on the web. Um, they were less impacted because they already had those, those systems in place. And people that didn't are really suffering from that. And like Shereen said, they're, they're trying to move very quickly to get into that. So it's, it's very much in alignment with what we've been saying for a while. And we're seeing customers that we work with, um, I won't name names, but you know, think of food ordering, all of the restaurants that have now closed and moved to takeout only, um, restaurants that have a mobile app and they see a significant portion of the revenue coming through that application. If that app goes down for even a couple of minutes, the amount of revenue they're potentially losing. So the fact that you know they already had in this scenario, app dynamics on that mobile application and had worked out a lot of the bugs. So they were able to, to capitalize on that, that revenue coming through because of the way times have changed. You know, James, in, in some of the customers I'm seeing in, in both retail and FSI, it's not really a pivot point uh, in, in, in their plans, but more an acceleration of plans they had. You know, something they, that five years out, need, they, there's a need now to do it now. Uh, based on the customers that you're dealing with, is that something similar in, in all industries or are you seeing significant pivots out there? I'd agree with you. Retail and financial services are, are you know, probably the biggest two that come to mind. And like you mentioned, most or a lot of those you know, companies within those two verticals had already made a lot of progress in, into moving you know, more digital. Um, but it, it has, it has also increased the acceleration of that. So even if they were doing it now, they're doing more of it. If companies weren't now, they, they need to move in that direction. Um, just because of the way that, you know, we're being not able to go into restaurants or banks, you're being forced to do things digitally, you know, even if you didn't want to. Very cool. Now is, is there... You know, it's, it's kind of a crazy question, but I always ask, what, what are the things uh, that people should think about if they're thinking of, of, of adding app dynamics to, to their technology level? I honestly think about it from a consumer perspective. We're all consumers and think about all the things that we do on the web. I, I know before I worked at app dynamics, I never once thought about what it even took to make a web page run or an application. I just want to log into my banking app. I want to make a transfer. I want to make a mobile deposit, whatever it might be. You don't think about the complexity that it takes to make any of these applications run. Um, you just think about it from a me perspective. And honestly, I would say any business in today's market, not even just with COVID, really needs to be thinking about their digital strategy, but not just from a user perspective, but from a technology stack perspective and understanding from the ground up what's going on in your application. So I honestly believe that app dynamics is a must have for companies versus a nice to have. It's, it's something that is critical for a business to really understand what's going on behind the curtains so to speak. I, I just think that's, that's incredibly insightful because it, I mean, businesses have to know, they have to understand. I mean, to, to your point, it, we can't get away anymore with just, oh, I click on my website and everything is wonderful. There has to be a deep dive into 
everything that's going on behind the scenes. When you guys work with with brand new customers, are, and then they onboard with App Dynamics, is there like an aha moment, James? You kind of referenced it uh, a little bit before with legacy customers. But if you got a brand new customer and all of a sudden you're showing them all of this data that has always existed, but they never had access to it, what are the reactions to that? Yeah, it, it's pretty cool to see because, uh, again, if they have never had any kind of APM solution, a lot of times they just they aren't aware of the kind of visibility that we can provide, whether it's, you know, the, the code level visibility, whether it's business data, whether it's some of that end user monitoring kind of data about that. Um, just the, the fact that they can get answers to a lot of questions that they have or if they, they'll have data to back up suspicions that they've maybe had, like they've known for years, like this one application has this weird thing that happens. They don't know why, but they've just always kind of dealt with it. And you'll see people very quickly like go in and, and even in a POV, we might work with them and they'll say, well, we kind of know there's something going on here. And they'll start to dig into it. And a lot of times in, you know, in a couple, matter of a couple of hours, they'll find an issue that's been lingering for months or years and go off and fix it. And the next day, like it's resolved. And so the value that that customers can get really quickly by by implementing this is is really awesome. That's amazing. Months or years. I guess everybody just kind of works around the problems. Yeah, I mean, it's it's common that we see with customers, you know, they always talk about there's a certain developer that they have. And one company was telling me like this developer basically makes as much as the CIO because he's been there for 25 years and nobody know, else knows how these applications were built. And if this guy ever went away, like the whole thing would fall apart. Well, hey guys, I, I, we as we get closer to time, uh, one thing Gary and I love to do is kind of turn the tables on you. Uh, and sometimes we don't ask the right question and there's something in the back of your mind that you just want our audience to know or hear. Uh, and so I guess my, that's our question. And, and what is it that maybe our audience should know or you would like them to know before we end? I, I guess I think I can... for me. If... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Shereen. I, I was going to say, I, I guess um, I kind of hit on it and we touched on it earlier, but it's it's not just applications that are revenue generating and that's sometimes what people think you know it has to be a customer facing app it has to generate revenue but there's a lot of businesses that have applications that their end user are their employees think car manufacturers you know out on the line you're going to need an application where your employees that are building these different components to these vehicles are going to need this application that's still critical to your business and it's not necessarily revenue generating or directly correlated to revenue so i would say it's not just you know retail or financial services it's it's every business, it's every application needs this code level visibility to understand really what's going on behind the sheets. And I, I guess that's what I would want to leave as a takeaway is not to get it confused with just, you know, retail or banking or these companies that we tend to think of that we're always using on our you know, our phones, the apps that are our go-tos. James, anything from your end? Yeah, that's a great point. Um, yeah, I, I think for a Cisco audience, the, the question, you know, we get asked quite a bit is around, you know, how is it different when you look at it from the perspective or the network or does AppD have any visibility into the network? Uh, and so we do, again, everything we do is really coming from the perspective of the application, but we can still see, you know, the infrastructure and the network. And so really um, the value is going to be more from a level one, level two support than, uh, you know, a network team. We're typically not replacing any tools like deep level diagnostic tools the network team is going to use. It's more for that level one support to, to identify some kind of issue and be able to very quickly say like, oh yeah, 
I can tell based on the data that's in AppDynamics that this is a network issue or it's not. And they can at least get the right people on the phone the first time rather than kind of just getting everybody on a call because you know they don't know where the problem is. They can quickly say, oh yeah, we see it's a problem with the database, let's just call the database team instead of you know getting everybody on the call. So um, it's always interesting to, to talk about that and understand the, kind of the value that it provides and for the different teams. So uh, the other thing I think from a Cisco perspective is, um, you know, when to call AppD, I guess, or when to identify that AppD might be a good solution. And, and again, it goes back to any time people talked about having kind of problems with an application, whether it's a, a legacy application or they're migrating an application to the cloud or they're building new platform, anytime they need some kind of visibility into what's going on with that application, there's going to be part of App Dynamics that'll be able to provide value uh, into that. Very cool. And and for those folks that want to engage with with App Dynamics, where where should they go to get more information? Uh, the website's got a ton of stuff out there. Shireen, you got other uh, places we should point people? Yeah, the website's a great place. You can request a demo, request to speak to an account member. Um, I believe if you know, for all of those Cisco customers out there, they can actually reach out to their Cisco account teams as well, and they should be able to put anyone in touch with their AppDynamics counterparts. We work Great. pretty close together. Yeah. We'll make sure to put James's uh, personal cell phone number in the d description on the podcast as well, so anybody can just reach out directly to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he loves well, that. hey guys, I, I know I speak for uh, for the audience and Gary and I when I say that this has been a, a true joy and, and really appreciate your time and, uh, and the conversation on today's podcast. And uh, I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a lot we didn't cover and we'd love to have you back on the show and, and dive deeper into some of those topics if you'd, if you'd like to. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love yeah, that. It's, it's been, been great. Fun. Thanks, you guys. Really appreciate it to both of you. Appreciate your uh, your passion for what you guys are doing. It's uh, it's just to me, it's incredible. Absolutely. Yeah, happy to do it. Cool. Thank well, you. guys, really appreciate it, and thanks, and we will uh, chat soon. All right. Have a great day. Yeah. Take care.